We're here with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight-up gameplay and our thoughts and impressions on the latest games releasing. As usual, it's me, your guide, Jake Baldino, and today we're talking about Devil May Cry, the HD collection. This gives you, on one disc or via Steam, access to high-def versions of the original three games. You know, we got the uh, Devil May Cry from 2001, Devil May Cry 2 from 2003, and Devil May Cry 3 Dante's Awakening from 2005. Now, first, you should know straight off the bat that this game was already cleaned up and put on modern consoles not too long ago. The HD collection hit PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2012. What we have here today in 2018 is a direct port of the HD version from the previous generation. Yep, that's it. And with that, you're getting pretty much the same package, the good and the bad. The good is that there are three awesome games. Well, okay, well, technically two of them are awesome. One isn't totally, but still. Characters look crisp and are as clean as they can from a PS2 era model, and it's all running in 1080p this time as opposed to 720p, the last remaster. Does it look amazing, fresh, like a new game? No, not at all. Did they do the best they could? Mm, maybe. <laughs> You'll still get the occasional visual bug or glitch, and there's still weird inconsistencies like menus being 4x3 and some cutscenes not being remastered in widescreen, which can be a bit jarring at times. It's also easier to swap between games now, though, and swapping you might do because they're still a freaking treat to play through all the games now i say that as a fan who played the hell out of these games so even if they feel aged it doesn't bother me personally much keep that in mind if you're a newcomer they may feel a bit older or clunkier to you but i still find them perfectly playable the original Devil May Cry, to me, is a masterclass in mood and atmosphere. You're Dante, the cocky anime badass, but you find yourself in these demonic, mythical castle locations that feel creepy and otherworldly, and it's pretty fun and easy to get wrapped up into this world of angels and demons and cool sunglasses and Matrix moves. Is it corny now? Yeah. Do I care? No, not really. It's fun. It's actually more challenging in parts than you might remember, and it's just a satisfying playthrough with a good amount of exploration and extras rewarding a replay or two. Everything is just about kind of perfecting the combat and your style in this game, and everything is intact. Most importantly, the music, and it's still one of my favorite games of all time. Now, next, Devil May Cry 2 is where things get a little weird. It's a bump in the road for the series, and while I always found some cool moments, and I, you know, I thought the game wasn't as bad as everyone else said, it's still no 10 out of 10. It, it drops all the charm and character that the series started to have, making the environments big and bland with little personality, and, and making the once really cool, lighthearted Dante into a grim, dark, mute idiot. The devil powers, though, are expanded upon. You can fly around and do more, and generally just the improved movement by giving you mid-jump dodges and cartwheels and cool backflips and wall running. Despite those expansions, the game still just feels dull as hell and loses steam a few hours in once you get past the cool stuff. And I think in some places the HD-ness here makes some of the environments actually look worse. But thankfully we also have Devil May Cry 3, which to some fans is the series' crowning achievement. This game serves as a prequel and gives way more depth to Dante and Virgil and all the family matters. You, you have different play styles to choose from and the game takes some of the decent stuff from Devil May Cry 2 and makes it actually good. Here the combat is absolutely the best it can be. It's easy to swap between weapons, you're constantly using your sword or other different weapon types while also using different guns, and the style system is as fleshed out as it has been so it really really rewards changing up your combos and just having some style. And the progression here is the strongest because you're going to be consistently getting different types of moves and new ways to use your weapons throughout. Plus, this game has some of the best enemy types, and it's notoriously hard as hell. You're gonna have to get quick reflexes, all I'm saying. And Devil May Cry 3 controls the best out of these games. It definitely feels the most modern, the most fluid, the most updated, and it looks pretty good too. So honestly, even if you aren't feeling the other two games, I, I think 3 has a good chance of hooking you. Overall though, these games are largely untouched besides the slight visual upgrades here. They standardize the controls a little bit, especially for the first one that had circle as the jump button, but I, I do really think that they could have went a step further and maybe tweak the camera a little bit, especially in 1 and 2. It's mostly fixed, so I, I don't know how they could get around that, but still, e even an attempt would have been nice because many times enemies will be off screen and you'll just find yourself kind of helpless. It it's especially bad in 2, but that's just another knock against that game. Uh, otherwise, that's kind of a small complaint. 
because this is a real basic bare bones package here. Like you have the three games and access to a viewer with a bunch of concept art from all three games, which is cool. And you can browse and play all the soundtracks, but that's, that's really it. It's very simple. Like I said, bare bones is the word. So like I said at the start of the video, if you did pick this up during the PS3 or 360 era, you're basically getting the same thing here. This is either for diehard fans who buy every version of the game, honestly, kind of like me, or someone who has never played the original games and wants to experience them for the first time. This is definitely a nice little trip down memory lane. And while it definitely isn't the best HD remaster I've ever seen, it's not full priced and the games within are really damn good. So even if it's not the sharpest tool in the shed, it might be one of the more fun ones. Does that analogy make sense? I don't think so. But that's Devil May Cry HD. I wanna know what you guys are thinking about this one. Maybe you're still playing it on PS3 or 360 or, or Steam. I don't know what you're doing. But let's talk about Devil May Cry 1, 2, and 3 down in the comments. I definitely wanna hear from you guys how you feel about this series. It's one of my favorites. If you got any questions for me about this version of the game or anything at all, you can ask me down in the comments or of course hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Jake Baldino as well. But by now you probably know the deal. If you learned a thing or two, clicking the like button definitely helps us out. We really appreciate it. But if you haven't subscribed yet, you should because you're joining an army 4 million strong and we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. You're gonna pay for that.